What's up, guys? Welcome to another great episode of Relate with Nate. We're going to hit you with part two of legalization of marijuana. Should we legalize it? Should we not? We have different views, different points, and I might even tell you what I think about it. So stay tuned. Because it is only through enlightenment that this scourge can be wiped out. And you must stand united on this and stamp out this frightful assassin of our youth. The great marijuana in particular. That is the purpose of this meeting, ladies and gentlemen, to lay the foundation for a nationwide campaign by you to demand by law such compulsory education. people being put behind bars and spending years and years and years in prison for a plant I don't feel like America is so free like for example the boy that just got three months for a rape compared to somebody getting 21 years for growing a plant I mean if America is so free we should be we shouldn't have to worry about facing prison time for a plant or anything else for that matter that is natural as long as we're not harming anyone I don't see why we why they can't why they have such a problem with recreational marijuana use we had some experts come to the capitol on the subject and they were talking the difference between pills and marijuana marijuana is a naturally grown organic substance compared to a chemical based substance that that's what's killing people is chemicals yeah Man, this seems like with all the money the government got, all this research, that they could come up with some kind of pain pill that was not addictive like the ones they are, no. you know? I think it poses a danger, uh, as I've talked about with a friend of mine, that, uh, you know, if, if someone wants to have a drink at home, uh, they, uh, you know, if they drink ar around their kids, their kid's not going to show up at school uh, drunk. But eventually, if you legalize marijuana, someone could be... Uh, smoking at home and it's going to be around their children, their children are going to get high too. And I'm, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not going to happen. No one's going to do that. Well, I believe they will. Uh, you know, when people think something's legal, it's, well, it's fair game. I can do it where I want to or when I want to. And I don't care what anybody else says. It, it, if you do something that impairs you, it can be dangerous. Uh, what happens if uh, you're sitting at home and you light up uh, a joint, uh, you, you get good and toasty, and you have a kid that falls and gets hurt. Uh, what happens if they panic and they, they, they take their kid and they throw it in the car and they take off trying to take it to the hospital and they get in a wreck because they're impaired? 16 years old and a marijuana addict. Here is the most tragic case. Yes, I remember. Just a young boy. Under the influence of the drug, he killed his entire family with an axe. Then there is the most vicious type of case. Here, in Michigan, a young girl, 17 years old, a reaper smoker, taken in a raid in a company with five young men. Here is a particularly flagrant case. Yes, I remember the newspapers made quite a play of it. In West Virginia, wasn't it? Yes. So I'm sitting here with uh, Sabrina. You might know her as the Mountain Medium. Um, I'm just going to ask her a couple questions about, uh, you know, some major issue that people are going back and forth about, about the uh, legalization of marijuana. So how do you feel about that? I'm not going to ask you if you use it or nothing like that, but I just want to know, you know, how do you think it could or could not benefit our community or our society? Well, it's 
there's always a double-edged sword to everything, but I do believe it should be legalized. I think that it would cut down so much. I, I, I would be willing to bet money, at least 60-70% on pill usage. A lot of people went from pills, I mean from marijuana to pills, just because of the stigma behind it and losing jobs. And if you have a prescription, you don't lose your job, but you're getting way more messed up. Also though, from an herbalist point of view, I'm into herbal healing. I, you know, even when I get bronchitis, I go out and pick weeds and cook them and make teas. And I do feel like there's healing properties. I, I feel like there's a lot of bonuses. I think it's I feel like it's sustainable. Even the stems are usable. We can make clothing, paper. I mean, you know, there's a whole industry out there for it that could benefit the economy of this area. And I think it would be a wonderful thing. It, we definitely need something to stimulate our economy. Yes. <laughs> but you know, marijuana stimulates more than your economy. <laughs> yes, it does. And and I would not, I would still think that certain laws should apply, like DUIs, you know, things like that. But I don't think it should get the sentences it does, you know, if you're personal use and in-home or medical or that type of thing. Um, See, in my mind, when I think of legalizing marijuana, I think everybody's downtown, smoking weed, you know what I'm saying? You're at the airport, on the airplane, people smoking, you know. Well, People they smoking were, in the basement of church. <laughs> <laughs> well, there would be a lot less shooting of each other and hitting each other. Yeah. <laughs> and But in a much more calmer, better form than a Xanax or a Valium or a... I mean, that's just my theory. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. even if, if it's not the smoking part, there's other ways they can extract the oils and stuff exactly. like that. So. Oils. When you look at certain neurologic conditions, those are things that will have to, there, there are studies that are going on, some show promise, others are, are still early on, but those are possible things to help with that. You know, you know, I'm sure you've talked with people, I have patients that have said, you know, what, they have ADHD or something and when they smoke uh, pot that they do feel more relaxed. So there is a component to that. So as they go through this process of trying to find um, uses for that, like I said, the, the better form is to do it through something like a CBD oil, and those are the, the, a lot of the experimentation that's going on now. What about uh, like someone that uses opioids or uh, prescription pills? Do you think that that could help? That you know, legalizing marijuana or the oils could help people get off, you know, those drugs or. Yeah, I think, you know, there is there are some promising studies that are showing the use of CBD oils for chronic pain, and, uh, and that's something that's being pursued. But it takes uh, time to develop drugs uh, and develop medications for certain um, ailments. Uh, as we go through this process, you know, you, that's how, you know, you find uh, other possibilities for the treatment. It's funny, like, um, the way that, that uh, seizure medicine was found to treat neuropathic pain was because you know there were people that had been involved in uh, uh, in war that had limbs that had been uh, taken off through blasts or whatever and if they were being treated with these seizure type medicines they found that their pain had had subsided some so that was a whole new development of a market of uh, uh, medications to treat neuropathic pain but it was found through this process of, of treating something else that we found out that you can do these things. So as we go through this process, there's possibilities of, of different uses for medications or uh, medicines that, that haven't been approved or gone through the vetting process through uh, the FDA and those trials. So when you're looking at, at possibilities, there are lots of possibilities out there. It's just gonna be, as they go through the process, when you compare them to other treatment modalities that are present, um, how does it stack up against that? And is that going to be a viable option? Is it going to, is it going to cause risk? What are the, the, the harms that can come from um, that medication or that, that uh, chemical? There is no doubt that there is an organized gang distributing the narcotic to students, not only in my school, but all over the city. You government men have got to find some way to put an end to it. Of course, I agree with you, Dr. Carroll. But do you realize that marijuana is not like other forms of dope? You see, it grows wild in almost every state in the Union. I've been around marijuana for the last four years, since uh, about June of 2012. And I've never seen anybody have any kind of adverse side effects from it besides eating about everything in their house or sleeping for a while. Uh, I mean, I just don't see, I mean, 
as with any crop, there's going to be people that try to genetically modify it to do different things with it or to try to mass produce it faster or any, any sort of thing that's a modification to it and there could be side effects from that. That's why, as with any other crop, it's best to do everything all natural. So, um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, you don't have to answer this, but I know you had, you got sick, uh, what, about a year or so ago? Oh yeah, ago? I had a bad, uh, I had a bad fall at advance, you know, I had a migraine for like two months straight. I had a skull fracture from all the way across the back of my head here. So and, uh, as a, as went into seizures and... So is that why you're such an advocate for it? Did it right, yes, want to help you out? It's helped. Um, when I was take, when I was taking the medications, the Depakote and the Capra that they had me on, I was still having the seizures. I threw them away, and I was, went back to you know my plan A, which was marijuana, and I was making sure that I was you know trying my best to find medicinal, you know medicinally grown, and so I've been seizure free since last August. So it's over a year. So literally, guys, he is saying that he is a testament that marijuana can help save people from uh, chronic illnesses, right? Right. Yeah, chronic pain. I've had. I've dealt with migraine headaches since I was seven years old. Helps with that. If you're feeling depressed or anxious or stressed out about anything, it helps with that. If you feel like you got a lack of appetite, if you're having trouble eating, helps with that. Helps if you're having trouble sleeping. And you still I mean, still function on a daily right, basis, I mean, just regular, I function, just normal. I function just fine. I function better than I used to, I mean, if I wanted to be serious about it. Because used to, I was immature and, you know, I had my head up my butt and didn't really want to do anything with my life. And it really helped me open my eyes, you know. I have to be an adult. And that's, that's really about one of the only things that did help me do that because... It was just like I couldn't face, I could. I had no reality about me, and it kind of opened my eyes up to reality. I've opened my eyes up to a lot of things I used to be blind to. There's just so many things that it's done to help to change my life for the better. Um, I had, I've had anger management problems since I was a kid, and I've grown to be able to control that thanks to it. I mean, it's calmed me down on that aspect. You know, with, with several different ways to consume um, marijuana, you know, a lot of people make pot brownies and they do these kind of things. What happens uh, when somebody gets high and leaves a pan of pot brownies out and your kid walks out and, and eats two or three brownies and doesn't realize what's going on, you know? Um, again, people are going to say, oh, that's not going to happen or that's people being careless. Well, guess what? I, I believe that's... I think it's being careless altogether. Uh, I mean, I can see both sides of it. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, the way marijuana, when it first came out, I don't know if everybody knows this story, I'll make it short. Uh, marijuana came out at the same time they were having the, when they were keeping people from making their own beer and everything, mm -hmm. they took that industry over, and then they started selling to the government. Marijuana was given a competition. So that's when they come out with a, a movie that was it's put on the public about what marijuana does to you, and ever since then, to me, it's just been the government fighting it, and they're selling you liquor, but you can't do this. I just don't see it. Apparently harmless shipment of 35 barrels of olive oil. The deadly drug was burned in the incinerator of the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. And more vicious, more deadly, even than these soul-destroying drugs, is the menace of marijuana. So uh, there's a rumor where I've heard or seen it on social media or whatever that pot cures cancer. Is there any truth to that at all? I've not seen anything that shows it to be curative. Like I said, there's a lot of things that are going on now with research that maybe there is something that it can um, it would respond fairly to that. But I've not seen anything, nor is any you know any research that's been put out there to show or prove that uh, uh, currently. But could it? I mean, there's always a possibility that there may be something that's receptive to that. You hear that, guys? Don't believe everything you see on Facebook yeah. and all that other stuff. You heard it right here from the doc, the great doctor. Um, we had a guy on, on here earlier that uh, we asked, you know, he said that marijuana is always used for medicinal because it, it calms him down and it pretty much keeps him from going off and hurting or killing somebody at any minute. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, yeah, some people can make the same argument. You know, I can drink a six-pack of beer, and I'm, I'm pretty relaxed or chilled out after I do that. 
but it's got, you know, if you get behind the wheel of a car, that's, you know, you've made a, a bad decision with that. And right now, with the current legislation, it's not legal to, to smoke pot or, or to, you know, possess it. <clears throat> so um, as we look at different things, you know, the farm bill passed that, that, that legalized hemp. And uh, hemp is a, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's been referred to as the kissing cousin of, of marijuana. But um, you can get the same CBD oil from hemp as you can with uh, uh, marijuana. But you, you know, hemp doesn't have, you could smoke a joint as big as this room and you're not gonna get high off of hemp mm. uh, as opposed to, it just doesn't have that, the amount of THC that uh, um, marijuana does. But there's still lots of possibilities with that. And I think that's the approach that most uh, um, federal agencies are comfortable with is, is going down the road at looking at uh, possibilities with hemp um, and, and what we can do along those lines. And then they're still cautiously progress. There's certain states that have already you know, legalized marijuana. And I think everybody else is just kind of watching to see how that uh, plays out. I know like in Colorado, man, they made a ton of money I mean, as bad as we're in in this state right now, West Virginia could use a ton of money. Well, one of the things, you know, um, that, that would be good is, is if we were to develop our hemp industry in West Virginia. And, and in doing so, there's so many possibilities uh, with, with hemp. Uh, hemp has, um, I mean, <clears throat> when you look back, the United States was one of the largest uh, producers of industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. uh, the state of Kentucky was number one. Um, but you look at clothing, you look at manufacturing, there's bioplastics that are created from this. There's just a whole lot of possibilities with that. There's over 35,000 uses for a hemp plant. It's literally God's plant. You can do a lot of different stuff with it. So I think that that's kind of the more uh, cautious approach to, to take as far as looking at possibilities that, that could be an option for the state of West Virginia to go down that road of exploring those possibilities. Guys, we want to tell you how much we appreciate you watching another great episode of Relate with Nate. I want to thank all my guests. Thank you. Thank them for their input or output, whatever you want to call it. But it's good to hear different points or different views of what we think could maybe help our community or maybe hurt it. So we hope that you enjoyed the show. And as always, one time for your mind. Give me two if you're true. Holler at your boy. You know how we do. Peace. It would take cops 40 years to kill as many black men as have died at the hands of other black men in 2012 alone. Not one more. There were almost 6,000 blacks killed by other blacks in 2015. Not one more. 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 In 2013, the FBI has black criminals carrying out 38% of murders, compared to 31.1% for whites. Not one more. Not one more. Not one more. Over 1,400 more black Americans murdered other blacks in two years, then were lynched from 1882 to 1968. Not one more. 93% of black homicide victims are killed by other blacks. Not one more. Not one more. Not one, Not one more. Not one more. Not one more. Not one more. Chicago's death toll is almost equal to that of both wars in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Not one more. So guys, did you hear those facts? Yeah, they're facts. We want to get mad as people when we think a cop takes our lives, but what do we expect when we don't value our own lives? So we need to reach deep. We need to look at each other 
and wonder, man, is, is this dude's life really worth taking? Just because he got on a different color than me, just because he's had something I want, just because we doing something illegal in the same turf? No, it's not. So what we're asking you guys, everybody, nationwide, not one more, not one more life taken from each other, not one more crime committed against one another, let's stand together. So what I'm asking you guys, for 48 straight hours, we always wanna boycott this, we wanna boycott that. Let's boycott killing each other for 48 hours. Not one more. Not one more. Hey guys, check out our great website, RelateWithNate.com. Check it out. You can give, you can watch all the past videos. If you missed any, you can see all of our shows. You can make comments. You can even order merchandise. So check it out. Once again, RelateWithNate.com. Williamson Health and Wellness Center operates a federally qualified health center located on 2nd Avenue in downtown Williamson, West Virginia, providing adult and adolescent care, behavioral health, dental, optometry, pediatric, and preventive health care services. Projects such as Healthy in the Hills, Mingo County Diabetes Coalition, and the Williamson Farmers Market foster long-term community wellness and prosperity. Stop by our office or visit online. Learn how together we can build a culture of health and wellness for everyone. What am I supposed to be talking about? How, oh, how awesome I am. I'm Nate and I'm really awesome. I'm like the black Donald Trump because I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I know more about ISIS and any terrorist group than anybody. Nobody can, nobody can come close to how great I am. 